In this video, we are going to discuss the time complexity of bubble sort. See, in the previous video, we have seen two versions of bubble sort. First, we have discussed the standard version and then we improved that standard version to increase its efficiency. If you want to know the workflow of those two versions, the link is available in the description box. You can check it out there. Now, in this video, first we will see what is the best, worst and average cases of standard bubble sort and then we will see how the efficiency is improved in the optimized bubble sort or you can say improved bubble sort. Now, I hope you are already aware of this term basic unit of computation which is the basic operation which is involved in the algorithm to complete the given task. So, in the case of bubble sort, the basic unit of computation is comparison. But wait, you might ask a question why we are not considering swap as a basic unit of computation. See here, the algorithm will swap the elements only when they are not in the correct order. If they are in the correct order, then no swapping would be done. But comparison is not like that. This comparison will be executed in each and every iteration or you can say all the n minus 1 passes. So it is more than enough to consider this comparison as a basic unit of computation. Now this is the code snippet for standard bubble sort. With this we are going to start our analysis. So let's see what is best case and when will it occur. So the best case will occur when the input array is already sorted which means the elements are in the correct order so no need for any swapping. See here the elements are already sorted so we don't need to perform any swapping. Now this outer loop is for passes and this inner loop is for comparison. So we are doing n minus 1 passes and in each pass we are doing n minus 1 comparisons. Then what will be the total number of comparisons? n minus 1 into n minus 1 because in each iteration of the outer loop this inner loop will be executed at n minus 1 times. So n minus 1 into n minus 1. Now if you solve this you will get a polynomial equation like this. From this you have to consider only the higher order terms because we are going to represent the time complexity using big O notation. So the time complexity is order of n square. Now let's see the worst case. So the worst case will occur when the array elements are in descending order which means the elements are not in the correct order. We need to swap the elements in each and every iteration. So again we will do n minus 1 passes and in each pass we will do n minus 1 comparisons. So total number of comparisons will be n minus 1 into n minus 1 and the worst case is order of n square. Now let's move on to the average case. In this average case, sometimes we may need to do swap and sometimes we may not need to do swap which is entirely depending on the input elements. But anyway, these two loops will be executed completely. So again, we will end up with n minus 1 into n minus 1 comparisons. So average case is also order of n square. See here, best case is order of n square and worst case is order of n square and average case is also order of n square. From this, we can conclude that the standard bubble sort is not considering the arrangements of the elements. Like it is not checking whether the input array is already sorted or not. And also we know that in bubble sort, after each pass, the largest element in the array will be moved to its correct position. So no need to compare the remaining elements with that largest element in the upcoming passes. So that comparison is also not required. So the standard bubble sort is not considering the arrangements of the elements and also doing unnecessary comparisons. If we add these constraints in standard bubble sort, then that will be the optimized bubble sort. Now, this is the optimized bubble sort. Here we have added those two constraints. Using this flag variable, we are checking whether the input array is already sorted or not. And here we are reducing the number of comparisons from n minus 1 to 
n minus 1 minus i. If you want more detailed explanation, please go and watch the previous video. The link is available in the description box. Now let's see the best case for this optimized code. Here also the best case will occur when the input array is already sorted, which means the elements are in the correct position. So no swapping would be done. See in this case, after pass one itself, we know that the given array is already sorted because in pass one, that is when i is zero, we are doing n minus one minus i comparisons. Here n is five and i is zero. So five minus one minus zero, which is four. So we are doing four comparisons, but we are not doing any swap because the array is already sorted. So the control will not enter into this block and flag remains zero, not one. And then we are breaking the outer loop. So we are doing only one pass, not n minus one passes. And also we are doing n minus one minus i comparisons. Here i is zero. So you can say n minus one comparisons. Now here you have to consider only the higher order terms. So the best case is order of n. Now let's see the worst case. Here also the worst case will occur when the array elements are in descending order which means the elements are not in the correct position. We have to swap the elements in each and every iteration. So we will do n minus one passes and n minus one minus i comparisons. Now in pass one, that is when i is zero, we will do four comparisons. See here n is five and i is zero. So five minus one minus zero, which is four. So in pass one, we will do four comparisons and in pass two, we will do three comparisons and in pass three, we will do two comparison and in pass four, we will do only one comparison. Now you can see here after each pass, one comparison is reduced. But in the case of standard bubble sort, in all the passes, it will do n minus one comparisons, right? Which is not good. Here, the number of comparisons are reduced. So here, we are doing 10 comparisons to sort this array. Now, you have to write this in terms of n. So, n into n minus one divided by two. If you solve this, you will get something like this. Here, you have to consider only the higher order term. So, the worst case is order of n square. Now, the average case is also order of n square. In this case also, these two loops will be executed completely. But we will not swap the elements in each and every iteration because in average case, sometimes we may not need to swap the elements because those elements might be in the correct position. So it is not necessary to swap those elements, right? But we will do n minus one passes and in each pass we will do n minus one minus i comparisons. Now this is the time complexity for standard code and this is the time complexity of optimized code. Here you can see the best case time complexity is reduced from n square to n. And that's it. I hope this video is helpful. If you have any doubts, please comment it below and don't forget to subscribe my channel.